right, troops, there's nobody on earth that knows more about car crashes than me, Neil Lennon, and Shane Duffy. Am I right? You're here. You're here. No, you're wrong, because there is somebody that knows more about car crashes. It's where pals at G4 claims. <laughs> right, so remember, if you've been in a road traffic accident and you're not at fault, G4 claims can make it easy for you. They can provide you with a complete accident management support that you require. They'll recover their costs from the at-fault party. They'll sort out a like-for-like -like vehicle replacement. They'll also organise your vehicle to be repaired at one of their approved body shops and return to you. Should your vehicle be fucked, they will recover the pre-accident value for your car and write you a big fat check for it. And the best of all, it won't even cost you a brass bra zoo. As they charge the app full insurance directly. G4 claims don't cold call. They don't buy data. And once they've processed your claims, your insurance will remain unscathed. And the best thing is Nicole and the team over there won't take on your case if they don't think that they can help. So if you've been, a, been in a road traffic accident or know someone that has, go on to G4 Claims on 01698 767172. That's 01698 767172. Get them at notatfallclaim.com or find them on social media at G4 Claims Limited. I recommend that you get them on social media at G4 Claims Limited on Instagram. That's all I'm going to say. All right. G4 Claims, not at fault claims. Maybe. Right, please welcome to the show a man who has had two spells in Scotland, starting at Kilmarnock with a loan spell from Watford in 2010. He returned in 2015 with Rangers playing in the Championship under Mark Warburton and then Pedro Cachina. It is Rob Kiernan. Welcome to the show, Rob. How's it going? Thank you, guys. Thank you for seeing. All good. All good. Mate, mate, tell us the new, where are you? Where are you the new? I am in sunny California in Orange County in the United States of America. There wow. you are. Do you know that's what? I wish that's just, life, isn't it? That is the fucking I, life. I wish we'd just done like a kind of jolly boys and says, right, we'll come to you and we'll interview I'll, you. I'll, I'll take you out and show you the ropes because it's a, it's a joke of a guy, to be honest with you. Oh, I bet you it is. And what's happening with lockdown and all that earlier? Is there, what's happening is there everything shut up, shut You hear about it, Joe Rogan talks about it in California. I mean, all locked down and all that, carry on. Every county, every, every, every county has different like, sort of rules, regulations. The, the police department here, the sheriff department have said, don't don't call us anything COVID related. No no restaurants have been shut down. It's just outdoor dining. The gyms have to have like a door that's like open, for example. Um, and apart from that, boys, it's been normal. Like you know, I, a lot of people here are just getting on with the days, and it's it's not been an issue. Wow, very interesting. I, I wonder I wonder why there's been quarter of a million died in America. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, I know. Yeah, those numbers are a little bit. I think I think they're, they're just here is everything's been manipulated a little bit. So uh, I think people yeah. have their own views, you know. Totally, man. So how how's life at Orange County? Life here is stunning. Um, like I said, I, I, in terms of just life, you wake up on the holiday every day. You know, you wake up oh, to the sun. Man. You know, I'm five minutes from the beaches. You know, it's a different way of life. Here. It's it's not just you know football. It's like your whole life outside of it as well. It's incredible. Where did you stay when you when you played with Kilmarnock? I stayed in the hotel that they gave me outside the stadium. So oh, the Rugby Park, Park Hotel? The Park Hotel. Oh, I have. That's, 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 that's all right there, isn't it? It's so Southern California, huh? I bet the pies were better, though. <laughs> yeah, the weather, the weather was quite similar. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of like with Park Hotel, you just kind of fall out your room right onto the pitch there, but don't you? I know. Hey, come on. Well, uh, it's right the, there. Into the minus 84 degrees and then get told to <laughs> run around on that pitch. So, yes, it's a little bit. I like now. Rob, I was looking through your Wikipedia yesterday, right? And you've had a lot of clubs in your career. Um, which, which one of them would you say, with the exception of Rangers, I know you're going to say Rangers, right, but with the exceptions of Rangers, what was, what was your favourite club, would you say, Wigan? You might not say Rangers. Uh, you might not uh, say yeah, Rangers too. Stop, don't answer yeah, these no, questions for them. Stop. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, you, you, you take your answer out of my mouth. Aye. Uh, <laughs> yeah, listen, so let's just, let's just go back through it. So, yeah, I mean, as a young star, like, I was desperate to go and get games and experience because I was, I was, you know, for my sort of under-18 sort of, you know, 
phase of life, I was, you know, probably one of the better players and it was never going to challenge me. So I went and I went alone. I knocked on the gaffer's door every week. So can I go here for a month? Can I go there for a month? You know, I just wanted games, you know, and I think a lot of the kids get lost in that, 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 that period now where there's like, they're too good for these reserve games, but they're not challenged, challenging themselves. So my mindset was just right. I'm going to go and loan, go and loan, go and loan, go and loan. Um, but I think my favourite loan spell I had was was Brentford. That was amazing. I was close. I was living at home still. Um, the boys got promoted, you know, that season. Um, and like, it was just a great, great change. Um, mm-hmm. And it was just a great experience. So in terms of my loan spells, that was definitely my favourite. Um, and then obviously you got called back from my loan at um, South End at the time to Wigan and actually managed to make my debut against Watford, my previous team, you know, as a boy. Um, so that was an amazing feeling and, and done really well there. And then um, got some games under my belt, done like a season and a half there. Went to Birmingham. That was that was an amazing play, club as well. Good, good standard. And then obviously went to Rangers, which was, yeah, like you said, my, my, my highlight of my career, I'd say definitely. How, when, when you were at Wigan, uh, <clears throat> were you made aware of the interest for Rangers at the time? It was your mind so made I was up right holiday. away. I was, I was on holiday and I got a phone call from, from Mark Warburton who said, I'm getting a Rangers job. Um, don't sign for Birmingham. I was like, listen, I've just done my medical. Like They've offered me a contract. I'm going to go and sign it. Um, that was the kind of vibe I was on when I got back from holiday. Anyway, so I'm going up to Birmingham now. I'm in the car with my old man and um, we're about to sign. Everything's good. Everything's paper. I get a phone call saying, listen, I've got the job. I'd like you to come here. So I literally pulled into a service station with my old man and just said, look, I've got a decision to make. You know, like, I either go up there or I, I, I stay safe and stay for stay at Birmingham. I know who's going to play. I like the manager. I like the club. I've just been on loan there. We've done really well. So I um, made that decision, mate, and just went up for it. Um, and yeah, that was a 20 minute chat in a, in a service station, you know. Really? That's, that's <laughs> mega interesting. Yeah. I love that. And then see how the likes, because I always wonder this about teams where so see, the, you, you sign for Rangers. Like, what's the thirst? Even before you signed, did you go on YouTube and look up videos and. Yeah, so see, what, see what the Ibrox crowd's like obviously, and stuff like that. Right. Yeah, I'll just be totally honest with you. Like, obviously, obviously, everyone knows Rangers sell it, but and now the intense it is and stuff. But like down there, it's not like the main focus. So like, I didn't mm-hmm. really get the magnitude of the club till I got up there. Um, but my my first rude awakening was it's just like as soon as I signed, I was getting death threats from you know IRA, all this kind of mad stuff going on, and you you know you Catholic scum. Really? Yeah, my don't, was listen, don't don't worry. I'll phone them and tell them to leave you alone, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Really? Is that yeah, like, right, man? Yeah, before I, I even before, before I even walked in the building, Mark, you know, the, the death threats and the, all this, you know, scum this, scum that, C word this, C word that. Like, you know, I was getting stuck on the street, like, just because of my background, you know, like, listen, my dad's Irish and that's that's never going to change. I'm proud of that. You know, I've got, an, I've right. got a Catholic tattoo in my arm because of my nan. She passed away mm-hmm. and I have a, you know, uh, you know, Virgin Mary tattoo because, you know, it's for her. Now, that doesn't define me, but also when I'm walking to a club, I'm, before I, even put, before I even walked into the stadium, I'm getting all this kind of stuff. It's, Did that make you think twice if I made the right move for you when you started getting like death threats and stuff and you're realising the, um, I mean, no, the kind extent of like, Yeah, I just didn't realise like how how much uh, of the other sides that would be involved in terms of just, you know, just play football and what it's going to play for an amazing club. And then before I even walked mm-hmm. into my, my background, and also I played for Ireland up to under 21 because I was a captain of that team and, we, you know, I was proud of that. You know, and then obviously as soon as I walk in the door or, you know, it gets put on Twitter and that, like, I'm getting <coughs> dogs abuse from all angles. So it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't, I'm not going to say it was hard, but it was just like, whoa, this is a bit of a wake up. So, um, and throughout my time there, it was just constant, you know, like, like I'm, you know, my house got burgled, you know, attempted twice, you know, there was all sorts of stuff going on outside playing. And it's not, as, it's not just football up there, it's, especially having a background that I have, it's not as easy as everyone thinks, you know. Uh, did, I, did nobody, like, say to you, like, You've been you've played for the Republic of Ireland and stuff like that. There's a good chance you're going to get a bit of hassle going to Rangers. Not, because... not initially, no, not initially, no, not initially. That's mad. You see, that's the kind of stuff that you think that obviously affected you, and a lot of times folk don't think about what players have to go through if they're maybe having a bad game I had, and I they're attempt, getting. I had, a, I, had, I had an attempted burglary at my house at three o'clock, and I had a game at three like twelve hours later. You know, so like you talk things like that, like it's no one knows, and I'm not here to like talk about it but like there's all sorts of stuff that goes on in footballers minds and then you know you're into such scrutiny and it isn't every every opportunity to give you know get a bit of stick you know it was thrown at me so from all angles it's, it's just part and part of it but these are the things people don't realize because you know no one's going to shout about it it's just it is what it is but you know 
That's me. Like, see, when that when that's happening, Rob, and you've signed for us, you're getting death threats, your house is getting burgled. Is there anybody at Rangers that you remember who kind of took you under the wing and went, right, look, everyone will be cool. Yeah, do you my, know what I mean? We my my neighbour my neighbor, my neighbor was a godsend, Martin Lyon. Uh, the Lyon right. family, I don't know if you guys know them, but massive, uh, massive respect to them guys. And they, they took me under their wing. They, I, went, I used to go boxing at their brother's gym. Um, and he basically just looked after myself and Harry. You know, we moved into a house together um, when he moved up. And if it wasn't for him, mate, like there, there was a lot of stuff that went, uh, got, that got sorted very quickly because of him. And, uh, you know, just top, top family. They looked after us and, you know, where to go, where not to go. Um, and even like nights out and stuff, mm-hmm. you know, we'd have Robbie and the security guys say, listen, guys, where are you going? We'll have eyes on you. And, you know, when the house got burgled, we had security for 24 hours a day, like, all that kind of stuff, you know. What about the football side there when you played with Angels, yeah, did you? Stunning. Yeah, stunning. Listen, like, we've got, you could think, of, think you've got members as well, listen, the, the expectations from those fans is, is rightly so, so high. Um, we walked into the building under Wolves to play a, a certain style of football and, as a centre back, you get exposed a lot. Like you, you know, aye, we, we score. We, we concede three, but we try and score four. That was our sort of, you know, mindset and attitude. So I remember it well, mate. <laughs> yeah. mm. So the, the, the mindset of, of, of us is like we're um, we're new players. You know, we don't really, you know, we're new to the building, new to the country, we're new to all the media. Like it's a whole different ball game up there. Um, mm-hmm. So we were went there trying to get that success, trying to play a certain style of football, but. You know, after us, after you know six months of playing, people know what your style is. People know how to combat that. You know, and we had to we had to find other solutions. And at times, I think we were maybe a little bit one-dimensional in that in the, in the fact that we were so adamant on what we were doing that maybe it you know maybe it didn't work out that's as what, well as we. Aye, that's what I always remember. Like, I always remember Mark Warburton saying, "Plan B was today. Plan A better." And that like rattled saying, a few folk, didn't it? That was... And I, I remember sitting at Ibrox and you're watching Fodringham get the ball. He gives it to you. You've got about two men charging you down right away and you want to play it for the back and you just know that's the way you've been drilled. How frustrating as a football player? Was there ever times you wanted to go, look, mate, we need to change this? Aye. Yeah, listen, let's, first of all, let's, let's clear something straight up. I've got massive, massive respect for my woman. So I'll never that mm-hmm. talk down this day. I'll never disrespect yeah. him. Like real, 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 real respect. Um, but in terms of yeah, playing and being part of that, yeah, like of course. There were times I'm like, I can remember playing Hearts Away and it was just like an ugly night. It was the pitch was shit. You know, and and the thing is we brought in Joey Garner, who let me tell you right now, he is he is one of the best I've seen in the air. Like he'll go ahead of train. Like there's no there's yeah. no denying he's put his head anyway. Mm-hmm. So like for us to to play that certain way with a big weapon up there like that because we can do that it was just frustrating at times and I remember yeah there were, there were there was arguments there was heated moments and you know you've got to remember as well boys is that you, you go against the manager's you know um, game plan and, and mindset you know you don't play so it's like, right. you, you have to do it or you don't and no one wants to sit on the bench so yeah there's there's opinions there for sure but First of all, clean up that yeah, massive respect for Martin. I'm never gonna talk, talk down his name, but yeah, there were times it was frustrating. Yeah. Do you know what I find interesting, boy? Do you know find this interesting? I know boys, right? As a player can decide to go to a team down south, they could be in the Premier League, they could be in the championship. But the, the minute they come up and sign for a Rangers or Celtic, you're right, it's they're exposed to everything in the media. They're in the they, they can be in the papers every day, and it's not just like the, the local paper, it's the fucking national paper. And I, I bet you there's quite a few boys that come up here and they don't realise that that's, that's what's going to happen, isn't it? Aye. It's not, it's not just the back pages either. It's the front Aye. pages. Aye. Well. Aye. Aye. You know what I mean? So, like, I, I, I doff my cap to you because if a lot of people, if they had been under the scrutiny and had the threats that you had, it would have been in the papers and they would have, you know, like, so to keep that under your heart, man, that's, you know, there's a lot of respect for you there. I must admit. What was it your thoughts about Joey Barton coming in coming to Rangers? Joey Barton is a top top boy. Like, right. He, the animal inside of that man is crazy. Like the the mindset and the the winning mentality is crazy. Um, he came to Rangers when obviously he wasn't at the peak of his performances and, and you know his legs had gone a little bit. But let me tell you one thing right now. That guy, will, you go to war with that guy because he galvanizes that squad and that team. I remember there was a, I remember there was a there was a team talk I think before the old firm and he actually. I think, the, I think the manager might have been talking and he got up his seat and just said, listen, guys, uh, no, no disrespect, Mark, I want, I want to take this. And he just sort of just reading off about, you know, like the passion and the hunger. And like, just, I remember it like it yesterday, like he just, he had this, this 
this attitude of just like, you know, I've come here to win. I haven't come here just to, you know, make numbers up. I've, I've done this, I've done that. You know, I'm going to go in there. This is like wartime. This is like, this is everything that I've played for. Is You know, this is now the real deal, you know. And like, it was just the way he was speaking. It was just motivational and it was just like, I'm with him, you know. Um, and even in training, he demanded a lot. He demanded <coughs> around the training ground. But that's like, it wasn't, it wasn't just him. Don't get me wrong. He was just more vocal. He was just quite vocal. You know how he is. He's outspoken. Um, and he has that respect for where he's been, but it wasn't just him. It was the whole. It was the whole club. Like Warburton, he put installed that to us. You know, like and everyone around the training ground. It was like pure respect, pure. It was not like a case of you had to tell people what to do because the standards were that high that it was getting done. Do you know, mm -hmm. um, training was I... training was nasty. Training was feisty. <laughs> you know, there's tackles, there's there's fighting, there's scrapping, there's words, there's you know, it's 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 not a playground. It's it's real, real, real football now. Right. Oh, that's interesting, and I'm just wondering. See that 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 pre-match game. Surely was that a five-one game then? Were we beat five-one? That was five-one, yeah. So how it worked out? Worked out well then, eh? Like the treat. Don't, don't listen to him, Rob. What? See, see something like that, Rob. Where you're talking like uh, earlier on, you're saying Mark Warburton. If you you don't want to kind of go against the manager, saying you're not on the team. See that day. When we get beat five one, I remember there was a big the media thing about Joey Barton versus Scott Brown, blah blah blah. See in the dressing room after that game, what was it like? What was Joey Barton like in the dressing room after that game? Uh, yeah, just yeah, it's just fighting, fuming, shouting. You know, it's just kicking off. But it's it's all because everyone cares so much. And we know the magnitude mm -hmm. of it. You know, so it's not. There must have uh, there must have been a there must have been a wee bit of the whole. I can't believe he stood up there and gave that big speech and then he's not turned up on the park because you never get a fucking touch of the ball that day. I think I think that kind of that game just in the most respectful way just kind of showed him where he was he was at as a as a player at that time, you know. And, and also you got to remember, let me let me tell you something. So he's come from Burnley, right? And I know I've worked under Sean Dyche and I know exactly how he works. And this this guy is organised drill, they're hard to beat. They don't play expansive big football like we were trying to do. It's a completely mm. different game. So let me try and break it down for you. When you look at Leicester, when they won the Premier League, yeah, do you know how hard they are to break down and, and be a solid unit? Because they've got people like Vardy and whoever else up there that are going to go and do the magic off a counter-attack. When you're the opposite of that, you're expansive and big, and the pitch is massive, and you're getting counted on. It's a completely different ball game. Joey Barton is not built to go and run and put fires out like, like a Kante, is it? You know, like, he's not that player. You know? He's a yeah. solid, you know, get tight, do your job, man mark, motivate, keep the ball, recycle. And use those boards up top, but we we don't play like that. It's a different ball game, and I mean different mm -hmm. ball game, you know, because you're expansive. So, for mm -hmm. example, I remember like yesterday, I gave the ball away. Um, I tried to find a pass through a gap, like we've been working on, like trying to find those holes, get those people danger men on the half turn. Give the ball away, you've got a lot of space to catch up with. You know, you've got like half a pitch to do it, and you've got boys Aye. that are, you know, Dembele. Let's be real, Dembele is an athlete. He's a monster. So, you know, you give them space, mm -hmm. give anyone space. You give anyone space, they're going to do damage. If you don't give them space, like Leicester do, don't give them space, then you've got to have your, like, your Maris's or, you know, your boys that can just give you something out of nothing and go and get your goal. Give anyone space, mm -hmm. of course you're going to do damage. So, it's mm -hmm. a different totally. type of ballgame. Joey Barton's come from Burnley. Aye. Now he's playing for us. It's a different, different ballgame. He didn't have a proper pre-season at Rangers either, didn't he? Because his TV commitments... Did. Even send it like Aye. Big Phil, like he had like two, two games, two days training, two days training out after doing nothing for like six weeks. You know, like come on. Aye. Aye. How, like, how did these, you go on? Mate? These are things that people don't see. You know, like these, these, these are the background things people don't see. So you know, like, you're not. No, to totally, mate. Totally. Aye. How about what about Davey Weir? What was he like on the training ground? Yeah, legend, man, legend. Like Aye. I just wanted to absorb everything good from him. You know, like he was just, you know, he oozes class in every manner. But like, like he was playing. You guys probably know. Correct minutes. Aye. He's thirty nine playing in the Champions League. Yep. That's... He's he signed for us under Walter Smith is like a six month contract is a stopgap and was there for about four or five years on everything. He's, he's, he's the definition of a Rolls Royce. Like he's just like you know. I remember watching him for Everton. I'm just thinking uh, he's just a cut above, you know. But like that's that's like that's a different pedigree of football. I'll be with that experience and physically, he must have been in some nick to to be playing Aye. those type of games. Ah, he was great, man. Oh yeah, listen, like, nothing, nothing but legend status for him, man. Definitely, man. I, th I think so, he is a sort of player as well. Even like, across the across the city as well, you look at him, you, you do have a respect for him. You know what I mean? He's he's a seasoned professional, and he's got that 
kind of respect for all angles, you know. So, uh, you're definitely right there in what you're saying. Right. So, Rob, is, was it a bit of a shock when obviously Warburton and we are left Ibrox? What, what was, was that just news yeah. to you? Yeah, the baffling ones, to be honest with you. Obviously, we've seen a little bit on, on the old Twitter and you know, just through word of mouth and that, but um. To this day, I don't really know the ins and outs, but you know, I think I can read between the lines a little bit. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, it's disappointing to see him leave, obviously, because then, then you're thinking, well, you know, you've been brought into the club by these people, so you know, yeah. Listen, every manager wants to bring in their own team, and 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 also let's not be let's not be uh, let's not beat around the bush. You know, the next guy comes in, and there's a lot of deals going on under the you know under the radar and things going on behind the scenes that people won't know about. So listen, you know that your time's probably going to be up, and you're going to be have to be uh, moving on. But that's the that's football, mm-hmm. and that's, you know I'm sure you guys are aware of what goes on behind the scenes. But there's mm-hmm. a lot of politics as well. So, um, how did you think of Shinya when he came in, mate? Uh, miles off it, yeah, absolutely miles off it. Really, um, right away, and is it and, and yeah, it's, it's, is is a full squad pick up on that? Oh yeah, every minute. But. Um, <laughs> Yeah, listen, I'm not going to sit and bad mouth people. Man. I'm not going to sit and bad mouth people because it's not really my man. No. Respect, but absolutely mm-hmm. worst I've ever come across. Really? The worst. The first day you come in and it was like, we're going to train on a Friday, but it'll be a Tuesday. And then, you know, he'd be like, no one goes in the gym, no gym allowed, um, do this, do that. Like, it was just... He... Aye, there's ways I've gone about things and it just seems as if he's just trying to come in and do his own thing and... He's ruffled everybody's feathers, huh? And he did, yeah, I remember him putting a presentation up of like where he was, and then I've left this to come here. You guys should be so lucky that I've made this decision, and I'm just like, you know, listen, oh, listen. that angers me, man. That angers yeah. me because honestly, that's when I mean, me and Jay like got a, massive. No, listen, listen, listen. He put a presentation up, like a PowerPoint of like his home and his family, and like um, the, the the yeah, like his hotel rooms and like what he looked. Check me like, out. Like, like, I've left this to come to work with you lot, so you guys should be, you know, you know, praising me. And I'm just like, Jesus Christ. And then the truth was a fraud, man. Yeah, it's a fraud, yeah. Biggest fraud, man. I mean, I just, I still, to this day, I mean, obviously the club had been through so much, and me and Gredo are massive Rangers fans, but to this day, man, like, how he got that job, I'll never understand, because it was like. Like I said, guys, there's a lot of politics involved in football. Oh, aye, totally, man. Totally, totally, mate. Aye, totally. But so then, did you did you know then? Right, I'm off. I'm leaving here, or one way or another. Um, I can't even. Work. No, I I thought yeah, because I knew that obviously he's going to bring in all his, his Portuguese guys and you know those name names. And then I literally got uh, got told that um, no, it, it kind of worked out in the sense that I had really bad tendonitis. So even 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 uh, I had tendonitis and um, I was getting through games and stuff. It was never really an issue, but um, I knew that. He'd use that maybe as an excuse because um, I wasn't allowed to go into the gym and stuff. They were not allowed to go to the gym. So then he put all our stuff down to uh, the under 18s um, sort of changing room. We were to go and change there. Um, it was about seven of us, and it was just like, you guys can't eat with us. You can't train with us. You can't use the gym. You can't see the physios. You can't see the masseuses. And it was just a case of like, all right, well, here's how it goes you play you know play a game on a Saturday and then the new manager comes in and you're out the door so it's like you know you take but, a bit of yeah. but is there any is there any obviously we've heard about the likes of uh, Kenny Miller and Lee Wallace but was it, was it visually like was it a, a, a kind of thing where he's maybe left the room and the user are like what the fuck is happening here like what's happening yeah yeah, yeah. I, yeah. It's like a, it's like when the head teacher leaves the uh, the classroom and everyone's like, who the f- is that guy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know. Yeah, but, oh. yeah, but, like, it's just scary. Like, listen, that's the biggest thing I've learned in, in this industry is just politics. So, right. Aye, aye. It's a tough time, man. But, well, time. but so, I mean, it's funny because if we was ever talking about stuff that's mega depressing, but what was what was highlights at Rangers? What was where you can go and. Um, I remember, I remember beating them. At, I mean, be, beating the first time. Obviously, we beat them at Hamden, and it was a great of game. Course. Like, it was, that, like, that was why the best it. days of my life. Yeah, I had, um, had my family in the stands. Like, it was an amazing experience. Those old firm games are something special. Obviously, listen, I took a few losses and that, but just the experience of it all. 
Um, obviously, you know, the first season there, it was great. We were flying. I remember the first game, I think we beat Hibs like 6-1 six, six, or 5-1, I think it was. Yeah, that. I uh, had Tavernier scored remember. a great free kick, man. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was just like, you know, great times. Like, it was enjoyable. Like, listen, like, you go, you walk around the city and, you know, people, you know, you, you get the good times and you get the bad times, you know. And, and it kind of went out the window when, when the thing was going well. I wasn't really getting the, the Irish stick so much. And I wasn't really getting the abuse on, online and all that kind of stuff. And out, and even out, even out like, nights out and that, you know, you're getting you're getting stick from from both sets of fans because I'm playing deemed to be playing for the wrong team with the wrong background or the wrong religion, you know. So it was, mm-hmm. it was both angles. It wasn't just my fans. It was obviously them as well. So it was... Uh, Spend a lot of shit or that. When you're going well, when you're going well, like it's you know, it's only one set of fans and that's them. And then when it's not Aye. going well, it's both set of fans, you know. So what do you do you still keep uh, like keep track of the results and stuff? What you think the Rangers the new role? Yeah, of course. Cool. Yeah, listen, I love to see him doing well. I love it. I, I follow them Aye. on Twitter, Instagram, follow all the Aye. boys that obviously I played with. Nothing nothing more than what I see is what they're doing now. Like Gerard's come in and just Aye. you know, the whole the whole vibe. It's amazing. And I listen, as you've been part of something like that, you 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 know, you feel proud to be say, listen, yeah, I've played for that team and look how well they're doing. You know, it's not, it's no, there's nothing else other than that. Oh, it's um, part of the story. It's part of the. Yeah, you're part of the journey. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Was it? What's it? What's it now? Twenty-two points? Is it? Is it still that? Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Twenty-three points. Life's good. 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 Love it, love it. John, John, just cut John, just cut him off now. Fuck him. Get him out, mate. So what's the stat I fuck him. What's the what's the standard like over in America, the standard of football, yeah. Orange County? No, it's really interesting you say that because myself and Harry, we've we've actually got an academy now where we sort of convey about young talent in Europe. So at the minute there's Brilliant, man. Talent. I get a you plug, actually... so what's 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 the crack? What's happening? So obviously, I'm, I'm I'm still playing uh, here. Um, Harry's decided that um, he's going to go down the route of, of coaching now. He's got an amazing opportunity now with with Nike and um, all sorts of stuff. So he's he's in an amazing position. Um, but like we said, we obviously we see these kids and we know the level of what it's needed to be back home. So we um, Harry has a has a company here, an academy that coaches these kids privately and with small groups. If they're good enough, we send them. If they're not, then, you know, there's other clubs here, colleges, USL teams, MLS teams. So that the talent's growing. And you've got to remember there's, you know, there's 10 times the amount of people here in the US than there are in the UK. So you imagine mm-hmm. the market's so much bigger. And it's a growing mm-hmm. sport. You're not ever going to see it as your number one sport, you know, ahead of, you know, your NFL and your, and, you know. Wrestling. Kind of yeah. Wrestling. <laughs> um, but it's, it's really, really taken off, like really taken off. And I think right. they've got the World Cup here in a few years. So it's going to just keep going and going and going. So, um. Yeah, the, the, the talent the talent pool is crazy, and a lot of the, the big clubs we speak closer to a few a few big clubs and um, the scout network here is just you know they're really going for it. Brilliant, man! Like, yeah, so are you are you maybe some point in the future, Rob, looking into getting into the coaching side and management and all that? Maybe. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, we've got this uh, academy here that's growing really well, and we're doing great with great stuff with it, and just seeing kids get a, a conveyor belt in the line is is obviously going to be massive. Um, but yeah, the coaching here is is, is out, out, out as well. Like you know, facilities that are open just to the public. Like I'm talking like they're better than they're better than Championship League One, League Two in England in terms of like the facilities. Like we 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 uh, have access to these these fields and it's it's like nothing you've ever seen. Like manicured lawns and you know it's just like another world. Like guys, I can't explain to you. Right. It's just like it's like essentially having like a Murray Park, but. Mm-hmm. It's, it's the open the public. It's like that kind of crazy. vibe, you know, that, that space and that vibe. Yeah, it's crazy. Right, next time we do a live show, man, when all this pandemic stops, we're going over to California. Right, to fuck it, let's wait for the academy, man. Definitely. Have you got any plans maybe coming back to the UK? Do you think you'll finish your career out in Orange County? No, I'm not ever coming back. Never? <laughs> Quite right. Never. Oh, <laughs> mate, I love that, man. Well, I love it, man. I've never been coming back. That, this place here is paradise. I wake up to the sun every day, I go... Days off, I go my surfing, I go hiking, I go, you know, the, the, the nightlife, everything, everything under one roof is just like, wow. like I said, it's like living together. Um, and yeah, like my world's here now and I'm building and building and building and there's so much opportunity are here. You, and, are you out for your dinner every night? I've got to be honest with you, I am, yeah. It's uh, <laughs> <a little laughs> you man, I can't man. Well, of course you would. Brilliant, man. Brilliant. <laughs> Tremendous scoff there, isn't it? I love yeah, it. Me, me and Harry, we've got, amazing, we've got some amazing friends here now that, you know, uh, you know, showing us the way. They're very successful in their own industries. And, you know, you just absorb everything that these guys have done. And 
I know there's a lot of English boys here that are in the same boats as us, not playing football, but just, you know, come from, I've got I've actually really good friends of two Scottish lads who live in the same apartment blocks. And it's just, it's nice to hear accents that are familiar and then everyone's in the same boat. Yeah. Everyone listen, you miss home a little bit, you miss your family and that now and again, but just for me, it's just like, you know, longevity and, and building my life here now. Living the dream, mate. Living yeah. the dream. I, I, you, that's fucking inspiring, man. That sounds that tremendous. Imagine if we us do there, man. Fuck, fucking have written off and just going to there, man. I must use a wee bit, man. But... <laughs> You're saying the free us? What is John not invited? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I meant, I meant me, you, John. I meant me, me, you, and John. Thanks, thanks very much. I've left on the bench, John. I'm glad. <laughs> right. <laughs> Rob, so every week on Football Daft, we put our guests' football knowledge to the test with a 90 oh, second oh, oh, quiz. Anything, you are. Mate, wait, mate, he says don't ask him anything. He's horrendous, but we need to do it, mate. We I should do it. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. I mean, I'll sit in on Google <laughs> on the slide and try and get you answers, but apart from that, there's no chance. That's fine, mate. That's fine. But we've got. Top of the leaderboard is John Sutton and Chuck Young with 15. We've got Mark Wilson, Keith Lasley, tucked in with 14. A good jo- a good doctor, Kenny Duker, Kevin Harper with 13. We've got Mark Reynolds in 10. Lauren Shankland on 7. Barry Feastenders is on the list as well. He's on 4. And at the bottom, it's a tie between Peter Lovenkranz, Derek Johnson, Craig Levine and Mick Sue. Can I, just, can, I just, just, can, I just, can I just put something out there just quickly? Um... Obviously, my days are full of practice, training, coaching, whatever it might be, and I don't have uh, English Sky Sports. So there's, the only things that I catch up on are obviously just my Instagram and just the Sky Sports app. So you're going to, probably going to sit and think, does this geezer even know football in, in any sort of slight, slight terms? So fire away. Yeah, but surely, you've know, been, surely you've been oh. keeping up with the, with SPFL on your Instagram and that. Do you know follow fucking <laughs> St. Johnson's <laughs> fucking time? Yeah, on it, huh? well, Rob, Rob, after you saying that, I've, I've just had a quick scan of the questions that producer John has put down, and in technical terms, you are fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. I was fucked Honestly. before you asked the question. <laughs> remember, Rob, you can't pass, you need to give an answer. Uh, Barry Face then was no, passing. Listen, it doesn't, his... it does, see if you don't know, just say anything. See anything. Right. Because it gives us a pass. chuckle, man, to be honest with you, Aye. if I'm being honest. Right, in 80 seconds, John, are we ready? Was Rob, are we ready? <clears throat> yep. Sorry, mate. Who is currently third in the Scottish Premiership? Hearts. Capelo is the home to which team? Chris picks up dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> Who did you score your first professional hat trick against? My first professional hat trick? In the playground, mate, at school when I was about nine years old. And what year did you sign for Wigan? 2013. Who was in temporary charge of Rangers before Stephen Gerrard? Graham Murray. What club was Graham Alexander manager of before Motherwell? I want to say someone English, but I don't think it is. Uh, Barry. Just, I know it's wrong. But... What nationality is Celtic's Diego Laxalt? Laxalt, that sounds like Scandinavian or something. I don't know. How many loan spells have you had across your career? 418. Davy Irons. <laughs> Davy Irons is the manager of which team? Oh, kill my what club have just sacked a commentator for having a jobby? Oh my god, I've seen it, I've seen it, I've seen it. He's talking about, about going for a shite. I think it's Hamilton now. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I just on Instagram, mate. I saw it because that's all I get is Instagram. Yeah. Anyway, when he when say Great Dog skipped a question, then, so <laughs> no, you are, 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 are we going to, we going to allow him to answer the question that Great skipped? No, Gilfie Sigurdsson signed for Everton from which club? That could have made all the difference. That could have made all the difference. Uh, we'll go through your wrong answers, Rob. Um, third in the Scottish Premiership, it's Hibs. Um, Capo is the home of Morton. 
I've got to hold on my hand. I left in a question from last that. week. So I, said, I was going to oh, say this. Fuck. I don't remember Rob Kearney scoring a hat trick against Dundee. I know. Just. I was thinking that. I know. But do you know what? He got a great answer. Well, so the hat trick of own goals in training. Yeah, that's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll give you that because you scored your first uh, hat trick on the playground. Um, Graham um, signed for Wigan in 2011, apparently not 2013. Rob. Uh, Graham Alexander went from uh, Salford to Motherwell. Uh, Diego Laxalt's Uruguayan. Loan spells you've had across your career. We counted nine. Uh, I don't know if you've got any more. But, but Rob said 400 nods, so he must know better than you, John. I would give him that, man. Uh, right, okay. Well, just, just, just a benefit of 418 <laughs> sounds better, no? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Well, we'll give you that then. We'll give you that. Uh, Davey Adams is the manager of Stairsmuir. And well done, by the way. Jobby Gay. Hamilton. It was Hamilton, so you're spot yes. on with that. So that gives you a score of one, two. We'll give you great. What about, we'll give you the, what about the slots you got? Yeah, we'll give you Gilby Sigurdsson as well. So one, two, three, four. Oh, four. Brilliant, yeah, man. Go, mate. There we go, mate. Oh, Same as Barry Feast Enders. You know what, what I will say to you is there, Rob, you got more than a man that managed Scotland. Aye, so, yeah. I'm all over that. Yeah, Someone that, who was yeah, that Craig Levine? Craig Levine, aye. Oh, fucking Jock Brown. <laughs> Maybe you Of course it was Craig Levine. <laughs> Rob. Honestly, mate, thanks for giving up your time for coming on. Really appreciate it. It's been a great chat, mate. Did you enjoy yourself? Loved it. You boys are good. You're a good laugh, man. Audio Frontier. <laughs>